Hey, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, glad. Uh, is it okay now? Yes? Okay. Yeah, so today we, uh, there's a big game, right? So today a big game. Uh, Lakers versus Knicks, right? No, just kidding. Uh, yeah, today is Super Bowl, right? So how many of you are rooting for Seahawks? <laughs> so how many of you are rooting for Patriots? Oh, okay, so most people don't care. Uh, uh, yeah, literally, this is like the two of my least favorite team. I wish they both lose if there's a possibility of that. Um, yeah, but uh, exciting for the game, right? Um, yeah, so today we'll continue to talk about uh, wisdom. We'll still go, this year we've been going through the book of Proverbs, Daniel. So if you have your Bible, uh, take out uh, the, uh, to Proverbs 15. And if you, if you don't, uh, we will actually have all the uh, projections. But if you really want uh, like a handheld Bible, uh, we, we can bar let you borrow one. Just have your hand up and uh, our ushers will give you one. Okay. Um, and let us pray together. Let's prepare our hearts. Now, Father, we want to, uh, again, pray for this morning. Um, we also want to uh, remember... Uh, the uh, college and high school co-workers and, and advisors, uh, they're at uh, Solvent uh, doing training, supposedly. Um, we just pray that they, have a, they also have a very blessed Sunday. Um, we pray for their return, uh, safe return. And Father, we also want to pray for this morning. We pray that your Holy Spirit speak to us and continue to challenge us and continue to remind us. And open our hearts as we receive your words. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Yeah. So today, remember to keep uh, keep uh, Pastor Andy and the uh, uh, the youth co-workers. We have uh, close to twenty people. Uh, they're doing, there's this, this is their co-worker outing and training. So keep them keep them in prayer. So they'll be driving back today. Uh, so we'll talk about Proverbs. Now today, we want to talk about um, what we call how much is enough. We're, so we're going to talk about money issue. Um, about a month ago, someone uh, who feel guilty, he's been feeling guilty for a long time. Uh, he lives in Amsterdam, so he went to see his priest. He's a Catholic, he went to see his priest and did a confession. So he said, Father, um, you know, I, I, I have sinned and uh, I need to confess to you. So the priest said, well, so, so, ni zuo le shenmo shi ne? He said, well, forgive me, Father, that, uh, that during World War II, I hid, I helped to hit a Jewish refugee in my house. So he just hid a Jewish refugee in my house. Well, you know, that's not a sin. It's not too bad. But I made him to pay me 10 gold, 10 gold coins for every week that he stayed. Father said, well, that's... Kind of not good, but at least you did it for a good cause. So I think you're okay. Oh, thank you so much. You just made me feel so much better, Father. But I just have one more question. So what is it? Do I have to tell him that the war is already over? <laughs> now this is just a joke. It's not a true story, okay? But it does talk about something about our human sinful nature, and that is greed. To what degree is too much, to what degree is too much greed or too much money or that something you want too much and actually becomes evil. Now we know money is not the root of all evil. The Bible never said that. But the Bible does say that the greed for money is the root of evil. So we're going to talk about money today uh, using Proverbs. Now I'm sure, probably by now, you probably have heard more than 2,000 verses in the Bible actually talks about money or, or possessions. And 15% of what Jesus preached is about money and, and possession. So we know this is an important topic that God cares about. And we, we want to dive into it. Now before we dive into uh, Proverbs 15 to talk about money or to talk about greed, what, what does the Bible teach about money? We want to uh, maybe set some premises first. So I'm going to talk about Proverbs 10 and Proverbs 11. So Proverbs 10, um, I'm going to read the uh, Chinese version. And today's Chinese version mostly is in Xin, uh, in Xin Yiben. And the English version is in New King James. So Proverbs 10, 
他说：“不义之财毫无益处，但公义能救人脱离死亡。耶和华不容许一人忍受饥饿，但二人的欲念却无法得着。游手好闲的招致贫穷，但勤力工作的得到富足。”在 Proverb Eleven， 他又讲到 ，You need to save up。他说，智慧人的居所中积存珍贵的财物和油，但愚昧人却把他所有的挥霍耗尽。So through these four buts， 但是在 Original Language， 其实它每一个每一个 term， 它都是有 second part， 都是但是 but。So in Proverbs ten and eleven， these four buts it give us three。Premises, three conditions for us to at least agree on before we move on. The first one is that we need to work diligently.、Uh, it doesn't matter that we know that God provides. We know that we're relying on God, and we know that everything we have is given by God. But it doesn't mean that we don't have to work diligently. So, the first one, hard work, is very obvious. The second one, we work, but we work right, right. So we don't have, we don't do anything that's not right or anything that's not honest. 所以我们是不要用任何 unrighteous 的方法。Number three, we just talked about that. We need to budget and save up. 你需要有计划和储蓄。So those are the three premises, premises 前提 that we set together. Now,、um, if you are interested more about anything like budget saving or anything we talk about here, you can come to talk to me in person, or maybe we can have a, a separate sermon on this. But that's just for today's sermon. Let's set these three other premises that we agree on. That we work hard. Uh, we make money the right way, and we、uh, increase our bank account. We save up and we budget. But the next question is: as we save up, as we have more and more and more money in our bank, where is the limit? Should Christians want to be rich? Is it okay for Tito to to want to be rich? Is it okay that we want to have more and more money? To to what extent is we're going to the wrong track? To what degrees it becomes? 在这里说的 ，it becomes the greed of the wicked. 什么是变成贪心？到怎么样的程度 ？So chapter fifteen give us guidelines on this issue. So let's go to chapter fifteen. We're going to talk about three verses today. Chapter fifteen,、uh, verse fifteen to seventeen. Again, I'm going to read the Chinese one. 困苦人的日子尽是艰难，心中畅快的，好像常想丰宴。财物虽少而敬畏耶和华，胜过财物丰富却烦恼不安。吃素菜而彼此相爱，胜过吃肥牛却彼此憎恨。So these verses give us three guidelines in terms of when are we asking for too much money? When does money become dangerous? And these three guidelines are actually in your.、Um, Uh, weekly bulletin, 在你的周报里面有三个可以给你 fill in the blank 的地方。So the first one, when does money become dangerous? The first guideline is joy is more important than money. Whenever if you if you treasure if you treasure money over joy over 喜乐 then it becomes dangerous. You know, in um, so when I was young, there's a song called "Mama 的话 okay. Now this is uh, this is different than Zhou Jielun, Jay Chao 的 alright. Uh, so for most of you, probably the only you know you associate with "Mama 的话就是 Jay Chao 的 song. But I grew an older generation. Uh, when I grew up, this is the song. When I think of "Mama 的话 this is the song that comes comes in mind. And I still remember. Uh, I can't sing well. So I'm gonna. 等一下，等一下会请 Miles 放。But 他的 <laughs> There's a phrase in there. 他说你不要羡慕有钱的人，有钱的烦恼你一定听闻。So maybe 我们有有人听过这首歌了吗 ？How many of you have? Okay. Ah,、uh, so the older people, yes. Okay. Ah,、uh, now、uh, for those who never heard of this song, ah,、uh, we will play half of the song. 可以请 Miles 帮我们放一下。可以放 video 吗？
所以他在说的是 a truly wealthy person is someone who is content. 如果你的心里面是 Mary, 是觉得content, then it's like constantly you're having a feast. 也就是说, someone who is truly wealthy is not about having a lot of money, it's about you have content. 你是知足的. So in reality, most of us actually don't have money problem, but we have self-control problem. I believe most of you don't have money problem. Maybe some of you do a little bit, but most of us, what we have is self-control, the issue. Because with, without self-control, you can never feel satisfied of what you have or what you, what you earn. Because you have a bigger need to enjoy life and money bigger than happiness. So when do you know how much is too much? Or when do we know that we're chasing money more than we should? Number one is, do you have joy in life? Or do you start to lose joy in life because of money? You know, one of the biggest lies that a society will continue to tell you and me is that you have more money, you have more happiness. There's a little country, um, it's called Bhutan, okay, Bhutan. This little country uh, borders with, it's between India and China. Now, Bhutan, uh, this is their um, GDP per capita. Think of it as uh, uh, average income of a person for one year. Okay? So in 2013, they got out close to uh, 2,500, uh, 2,000. But you see, they're, they've been growing, just like just over past 20 years, their GDP has been growing. Even though it's not a lot, but it's, it's growing. It increases every year. Okay? And it's one of the fastest growing economy of the world. Uh, basically, in recent years, every year, their economy growth is about 25%, which is very, very, very high. Now, there's something called happiness index. Right? If you haven't heard of it. It measures people's happiness. Well, it measures the citizens' uh, psychological well-being. Okay, in many different areas. It basically is an index of how happy the citizens are. From 1990 to 2000, they have this very, very low, the wages, the whole. Bhutan actually ranks, surprisingly, top 10 in the world every time, one of the happiest places on earth. However, when they make more money, to 2016, so it's the first time they drop out of top 10, they become uh, rank 13 in the world, which is still pretty high. 2013, they become rank 17. 2012, they fall out of top 50. But they make more money. So what? So why is that? They make more money. How come, come the happiness index actually drops every every year? One of the theory by the scholar is actually 1999, the introduction of TV and internet. So they have something to compare. They know what the outside world is like. Now, we need to understand, before they were genuinely happy people. It's not like people in North Korea that, you know, they don't know the outside world, so they thought this is what life is about. 
These are genuinely happy people. They live a happy life. They did not live a miserable life. But after 1999, when they were exposed to the Western world by TV and internet, they start to compare. They start to compare that they see what people have in other countries that maybe they don't have. And they become discontent. And they want more. So the moment they want more, the moment they become less and less happy. So even though the country becomes richer and more developed in the eyes of us, in the eyes of Westerner, but overall, the country actually becomes less and less happy. And suicide rate actually jumps higher and higher. Something funny, right? And in fact, if you look at, this is a map, okay? This is a map of called Happy Planet Index. So it measures the happiness of the people and happiness of the land. Okay, uh, I think maybe ecological or pollution. Green is people are generally happy. Yellow is less happy. Red is people are generally sad. U.S. One of the richest world, richest country in the world. It's actually one of the saddest. If you, they do the, they this, they have a lot of ways to survey this. And in general, people in the U.S. are discontent, are sad. So, and uh, while our neighboring country, Mexico, is actually, <laughs> they may not enjoy life, they may want to come to the United States for what they think is a better life, but a lot of times it doesn't make them happier inside their heart. You see, the, the world will continue to tell you that if you have more money, it's more happiness. But in reality, that may not be the case. Just look at U.S and the neighboring countries. I know you're trying, each trying to find like certain countries. So let me move out of this map, okay? You can go ahead and Google it. Good. So the point I want, to, I want to make is that a truly happy person is someone who is content. Now, how do you feel content? with freedom. If you feel free, you usually feel content. If you feel suppressed or chained to something, usually you're not content. And what type of freedom are we talking about here? We're talking about financial freedom, right? Now, usually the world will define financial freedom, 财务的自由, like this. You work hard over the years, so you have earned and saved enough money, so you don't have to worry about your finance, and you don't have to worry about money. So maybe you can retire early, and you can spend more time in serving God, or to become a missionary, or perhaps you can give more to the kingdom or to the church. And, and that's usually how the world defines financial freedom. And you, you probably, it's not your first time to hear that. Now, I do respect that, I, and I, I love everyone who have this goal. This is, this is your goal, that's an honorary goal. I'm, I'm not here to say against that. You know, if you want to retire early for God and so you can give more in terms of money or time or energy. Um, and I, I think it's great. It's just that when I read the Bible, I have not seen that principle in the Bible. At least not clearly. Okay. Because God doesn't tell us in the Bible that you need to pray for wealth, pray that you can be rich so you can retire early and serve Him. But if that's what God called you to do personally, I think it's great. Don't, don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to change that. But I can only share what I think the biblical principle is, is actually God challenges us, challenges us to give right away, right now. God challenges us to live a sacrificial life right now. God challenges us to love sacrificially right now. And God challenges us to care about the poor and the people who are in need right now or all the time right so the time is always now and not later of course you can plan later but i think this challenge always starts now so because if you want to save up and once you have that financial freedom so you can serve god more uh there sometimes there there will be issues for example because along the way, a lot of times, you're relying on yourself to make that money. 
And because you have a lot of money, a lot of times you don't rely on God as much compared to someone who just has enough, right? Because you have something to lean on. And another reason is because when you want to achieve this as your financial freedom, usually that means you have a lot of money. And for most people, once you have a lot of money, you live a higher standard of life, and you cannot go back to a lower standard. And, and I can quickly share share with you. Um, about less than two years ago, uh, I, by the way, I never had a smartphone until about more than a year ago. Uh, my friends, uh, they, uh, some of my friends, they gave me an iPhone 4. It's about about two years ago. It's my first smartphone. Before, I don't need smartphone. I can use my whatever flip phone, like Beikeji, and I feel content. I don't text. I, I never text. Okay? I, I, I never text. I never need smartphone. I never need smartphone to play games or go on Facebook. But two year, close to here, two years ago, when I was given a smartphone, now the iPhone 4, the phone is almost dead. Okay? So you know what to give for my birthday. No, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. No, but the phone is, is, is almost dead. But, so I'm thinking about replacing it. I realized I cannot go back to my old non-smartphone. Because once I'm used to it, it's just so difficult. But two years ago, I'll never say that. I tell everyone I don't need a smartphone because I hang out with all the youth pastors. Now, when we talk about calendars, I'm the only one who takes out like a calendar. <laughs> everyone took out their smartphone. I, I was proud. I, I don't need a smartphone. But, you know, two years, I, I don't know if I can say that. Because I'm so used to it. Once you're accustomed to a certain standard, it's very hard to go back. You, you, that will become your standard of living, naturally. Um, before, um, I don't think I need cable TV. But my wife was, enough, uh, was nice enough when we, when we got married. Uh, she let me to have cable TV, so I still have cable TV. Once I have cable TV, I enjoy the freedom of going you know, to watch sports, ESPN, any time of life. So it's very hard for me to discontinue, even though it doesn't make sense. It's like $60, $70 a month, right? You can just, you know, Netflix, and that's like a seven, eight dollars, right? And it's hard for me to tell my wife, okay, let's discontinue the cable TV, because I, I, I'm so used to it. And uh, two year, about two years ago, uh, they gave us a promotion, like a free DVR. Before that, I said, I never need DVR. Why do I need DVR? I, I, I mean, if I want to watch it, I watch it. If I don't, I don't. Now, it's almost like, oh, DVR is so good, right? I can tape it. I can watch it anytime. I can just fast forward the commercials, right? I can tape a game and I can watch it later, right? I can, I can tape a game on Sunday. I can go home and watch it, right? And I, right now, DVR, I think the contract is almost up. I don't know if I want to stop. Because it's so convenient. So what, I'm just using that example to let us know the time is always now. Because you will be accustomed to a certain standard once you gain more and more money. That's just human nature. You and I, very hard to go against it. I cannot go against it. So the more money you accumulate, usually means you live a higher standard. And usually, usually it means it's harder for you to give up. So let's go back to here. So what is financial freedom? So for me, I do want to define financial freedom. Again, I respect if that's your personal goal. I totally respect it. But I do want to redefine financial freedom a little bit different. Financial freedom is as long as you make enough, you do not worry about tomorrow. So financial freedom in, in the Bible is not a status. It's a mentality. Is you change your mentality to make yourself free from worrying about the money or greed about money. And that's free. And, and that's why in Matthew 6, 14, very famous the verse, Jesus said, It's always about now. It's about we change our mentality. It's not about accumulating the wealth so that you have this status. So Proverbs 30, it's very interesting. This is by King Agur, the king. He did a prayer. He said, God, I want two things. And one of them is, Give me neither poverty nor riches. 
，然后你只给我需要用的食物就好了，免得我吃饱了。Means if I'm too rich, then what I don't I do not rely on you as much. 或者我如果太穷了 ，then I start to sin. I start to think about evil things. So give me just enough. Give me content. So the first point is we want to be content. If you, how how do we know we're chasing money too much? Is you have a lot of worry, you lose joy. You want money more than joy. You think too much about that, and you start to lose joy. And that's the first warning sign that maybe it's too much. So how much is too much? You, when you start to lose joy, when you worry too much, when you plan so much that you think this is something you must get, and you start to lose joy along the way. Number two, the warning sign is God is more important than money. 在我们刚刚读到的的这个 verse sixteen 说财务虽少而敬畏耶和华胜过财务丰富却烦恼不安。We have the same concept in New Testament. If you combine these two things, content and also uh, 敬畏耶和华。所以在 First Timothy 6:6， 他说，敬钱而又知足就是最大的 gain。And so you're combining these content and 敬钱。有一个妈妈，她给一个小男孩两块钱，这她就跟这小孩说 ，You're going to church today, so uh, the one coin is for uh, your offering for God, the other is for you to buy ice cream. 所以这小男孩就很兴奋，他就跑跑跑 toward going toward church. And unfortunately, he fell. 他就跌倒 And 这两个 coin 就滚滚滚 And one of them 就滚到那个水沟里面 Go into the the sewage. 然后这小男孩就去看 Oh, there's one coin in the sewage. There's no way he can pick it up. So he's very frustrated, very sad. Look at it for a while. Then he becomes very joyful. Oh, it's not a big deal. God, I'm sorry. Your money is there. <laughs> In a lot of times, we actually have that mentality. In Proverbs three,、uh, nine to ten, this is a very important、uh, concept. In chapter Proverbs chapter three verse nine, he says, "You want to put your money, all your wealth, into the house of God, and give it to the Lord, give it to the Lord, give it to the Lord. That way, your house will be full of wealth, and your wine will be filled with wine." In this verse, he talks about honoring God, which means to look at Him as important, to see Him as important, to see Him as important. So how do you honor God? How do you show that God, you are somewhat important? It's with your possession and with your earnings. You put God before money. Now, how do you make someone feel important? Jesus, people are like that, right? How do you impress your girlfriend, right? How do you make your girlfriend feel she's important on Valentine's Day? It's coming up, right? Or your wife? Is you spend spend some money that you think she deserves? Right, whether it's by fancy restaurant, flower, chocolate, or gift, right? Usually that's how it is. You spend some money, right?、Uh, most people, that's how that person would feel he or she is important, right? I mean, you can you can use an A4 paper and write, right, and give it to her, try to see if she's impressed, right? You gotta be a very good author to do that, right? Usually you need to spend some money that he or thinks she thinks. She deserves, or he deserves. Same thing with God, right? If you think God is important, then you're willing to spend something that that he deserves to show that he is important. And and more importantly, we we need to continue to remind ourselves who 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 owns these things. 我们有的东西到底都是谁的 ？Who possesses these, these things? 是我还是神 ？Is it God or me? Do I own my things? Or does God actually have the ownership? And we all we constantly struggle with this, right? Because it's something that 我辛苦赚来是我的 I earn these versus that these are God's. He just gave it to me for me to do a good stewardship. We constantly struggle with that, and if we constantly struggle and forget to remind ourselves that God is the one who is in control. God is the one who gave me the ability, my intelligence, my opportunity to earn these money, and I constantly struggle with that. Because the world's pattern, so that creates this thing. The world's pattern is this: we will acquire, we will spend. Then we go this way. This is the normal worldview. We spend, then we will spend some expenses. There are expenses that we have to pay. Then we have more money. We will enjoy, right? More luxurious life. Then, more money, we will save or invest. Then, more money, we will give to God or to other people. 
And, and that's naturally what the world teaches us. But if you read the Bible, actually God teaches us the kingdom view actually goes the other way. God said that you give him first. Then you need to know how much you need to save and invest. Then you save that money up. You don't touch that. See, God always teaches the other way what the world teaches us to go. And when we, when we reach that, usually we will have a lot of joy already. So we no, don't need to spend as much on the luxurious stuff because we have this joy. And then you pay your expenses. And so I think God always teaches us that we need to give Him first. Then you plan and save and invest these. So God te teaches us the other way, what is first. Right? If you go back to how that Zeli Proverbs 9, he said, if you want to honor God, you give him the first fruit. The first fruit has two meanings. It means the best fruit, it also means first, literally. Meaning, This is what God, I want to give it to you. But a lot of times, we say, hey, your money is over there, right? You, you can pick it up later. Because I want my ice cream. Because usually that's our mentality. Do we give God first? So on the offering principle, we talk about tithe, we talk about one-tenth, and there's, there's of course a lot of biblical principle in it. So let's just say, if you earn that 5,000 amount, just for example, you need to understand that 500 or at least 500 needs to go to God first, no matter what. It's not like, okay, let me pay my uh, mortgage, pay my car, pay for my children, pay my tuition, pay for my you know, grocery. Let's see how much I, I have left. Well, maybe this month I have 100 left. So God, the rest of 400 is kind of in there. You know, I just give you 100. No, that's not the mentality God talked about. God said, if you make 5,000, you need to give five, you need to set apart 500 first. First. It's always the case. Because remember, tithe, it's not about how much you give to God. It's about counting your blessing, what God deserves, how much God has blessed you. And I'll share my quick testimony. Um, when I was in seminary, I was not rich. Okay, probably an understatement. Um, the church was good to us, but at that time, uh, that's a church, okay, seminary, the monthly expense just is $600 per month. Okay. Uh, now, before the 600, so no, uh, most of the time, Sharon and I were both in seminary, so we make 1200 a month. Okay. Uh, I was working uh, as a part-time in teaching. I was, most of you know, as a professor in community college. So I teach one class. Um, yeah, actually funny, I teach one class. Uh, I only teach one class. I only work about three hours and I make 700. Yeah. Yeah. More, more than what you're giving, right? But yeah, so it was very difficult, difficult for me to give up with a teaching job because it, it, it's, a, it's good money, actually. <coughs> so total, we make about less than that's in 2000. And it was very difficult for us to live in Irvine, to be honest, to, for the family, all together, about 2000, less than 2000. It was very difficult. But we still need to pay a little bit of tuition uh, because both of us are students and we need to you know, make our living. Every month when we're doing our tithing, seven, seven, it was 200. It's very, very difficult. I remember every month that we get 200. And actually, we don't get more than 10th. Even though we didn't have a lot of money, but we actually did more than one tenth every single month. We did our offering to church, we did our offering to mission organization, we support a child uh, with World Vision or Compassion, I forgot, but um, sure is the one who pays that. Okay. Um, but altogether, it's close to 20% a year. And we did that every single year. But amazingly, we never lack. God always gave us enough. Every time when, when Sharon and I is like, this month is going to be difficult. Every time we say that, we go to like, when the uh, seminary, what's the church, the mailbox, there's going to be an anonymous envelope, the major offering. I don't know who, who gave it to us. Sometimes 100, sometimes 300, sometimes even 500. We don't know where, where does this money come from. But God provides every single time. 
And the funny thing is, um, people start to ask me to go to their church retreats, to speak at their church retreats. Now, of course, I didn't go for the money, but uh, it's, it helped, right? Now, three years in seminary, every year, at least twice, sometimes three times, people invite me to speak at their church retreat, which help us financially. The funny thing is, no, so was I said, was I was still in seminary. I didn't even know what I was talking about. And what, since the first year, I didn't even know how to preach. People invited me to go to their church retreats and speak at least twice a year. Fun, more funny thing is, after I graduated, I had never spoken at any church retreat. Not even EFC or Irvine. I mean, this is not a thing you should invite me. But it's just so funny. Because God provides in ways that I cannot imagine. Before, I didn't even know what I'm talking about on, on the stage. And people invited me two, three times to be to speak at church retreats. And it did help us financially. And never again after we graduated. I don't know why. But um, yeah, anyway, don't, don't spread the word and invite me. Okay, that's not the point. But I do want to share this. If you give, God dares you to test him that he does provide. Because here it says, God will fill your barn when you give him the first, when you give him the best. And it's always okay. So I want, I want to quickly share this. Just uh, this is what you should do, okay? And I'll be very, very straightforward. Just uh, if you need a salary, just uh, by monthly, uh, actually semi monthly, um, need a, let's say, total of 5,000. Now, what you can do is by the beginning of the month, you give 500. Anyway, to the Jachi is five thousand. And if there's any other gift and you can make a table donation. I suggest you and I recommend you actually make a table to, to, to keep track of your income and to keep track of your tithe. Okay? And this is what I do. So I know I do more than actually I do more than tithe. But I'm just recommending that you do you do that. You do it at the beginning of the year. It's not just be, after I become pastor. Ever since I have a stable income, before I, I become a pastor, I do this at the beginning of the month, every every time. Yeah. So I have my offering because usually, so I don't forget. Right? And this is something I hope maybe something you can keep in mind. Okay. Again, the time is now. If you say, God, when I make more, I'll do tithe. Uh, usually it's not about future, usually it's about, not about you make less or more, because the time is always now. If you do it now, God, God will always give you enough. In我们刚刚讲到的这个里面, I want to go a little bit further. Malachi讲到, there他说什么呢? 他说人怎么可以夺神的东西呢? 他们说我们没有上帝,我们没有夺你的东西啊。上帝说就是你们在当纳的十分之一和当县的公路上。so actually it talks about, there are actually two things. One is tithe. Tithe is what? It's for Levites. So they give one-tenth to Levites, which is today's church or pastor. That you give one-tenth. But you also give a thanksgiving or a burnt offering. Usually it's for gaiyan or suzui. Today, we don't need to burn any animal or any offering on the altar. But, so maybe today we give thanks by giving to other organizations. So it's always, this is what I will suggest. You give one ten to your church, which is EFC Irvine, and you give more to other organizations, but it's on top of that one ten. Because in the Bible, it actually talks about you give one ten, that's your duty, but then you give more to give thanks. So God is always more important. And I will finish um, this with uh, the story here, which is John Wesley. John Wesley, uh, 他是叫魏斯里, has nothing to do with Nippon the Wei Sili, right? He's an 18th century evangelist. He's one of the founders of United Methodist Church, Wei Li Gong Hui. In 1731, when he was 28 years old, he said, God, I want to serve you, I want to give you everything I have, I want to give to the kingdom. That year, his income is 30 pounds, annual income, okay? Uh, 30 那他那年的花费, unfortunately, 他就是需要28 pounds to make a living. 所以他那年的奉献, 2 pounds. Okay, a little bit less than 110. But 1732, next year, 他doubled他的income, 他keep他的花费在28, and he gave everything else, 32, to God. The next year, 他的income become 90. He still kept the same 
expense. That's something we need to learn. Because usually when we make more money, we raise our standard and we spend more. And I think John Wesley has a good mentality that we can at least think about. And until one year, he makes his half, the highest he made is uh, 1400. That year, his expense is still about 30. And he gave every, uh, let me jump, jump that. 在, uh, Matthew 22 the whole jump down some of so quickly, we know we need to love God as the priority, then we need to love self, which is you need to give yourself rest, Sabbath, love the people around you, and love even strangers. If you are putting money above any of these, then that's also a warning sign. If you want to make money to sacrifice that you don't love yourself, then that's a warning sign. If you want to make money and more than that you want to give to the people around you, whether it's your family, friends, or your even strangers, that's also a warning sign that you're putting money above love. And in the Bible, there is a reference to this idea that when you are collecting, you don't cut corners, the corners, so you let the poor can pick up these. This is on top of the offering. So actually today, we have to understand there are actually three types of giving that we should be constantly giving. Tithe, 十分之一, give me the church. Other organization as a thanksgiving offering, then giving to the poor, as this is what's suggesting to you. So there are three types of giving we should constantly put in mind. And these should all be above 你对money想要的那个 greed, 或者是那个 lust. And I'll share this later, but um, um, because of time. So quickly, I want to um, close here, but before I close, I want to just summarize what I talked about today. How do we know we're chasing too much on money? Number one, you start to lose joy. You don't have contentment. Number two, you're putting God, you're putting money before God. You're not tithing plus giving. Number three, Kaisi. The money more important than love, more important than relationship, more important than the health, more important than helping other people. Those are the signs that money is too important for you. Let us pray. Father, we come before you. We pray that you remind our brothers and sisters to make you the priority and to make the things we talk about the priority over money. And I'll just ask one question. If one of your prayer is, God, I want to change my spending habit or change my, how much I give or how much I value money or how much I value health or my priority, you know, something that we talked about today, if that's something you want to pray about, can you raise your hand and we want to pray for you? Father, I want to pray for my brothers and sisters. May your Holy Spirit help us, whether it's to help us to adjust our priority, whether it's to help us to adjust the way we spend, or the amount we give, the amount we tithe, or how much we treasure our health, or how much we treasure relationship, or how much we put importance of helping people around us, even strangers. I pray that your Holy Spirit help us, and remind us, and challenge us, and you continue to remind us, not just today, but to help us to manage our money the right way. Manage, manage the things and be good stewardship to the things that you have entrusted us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.